Clinton is in the Arizona desert, training with a group of No Worries Club riders. After a successful first day of working with a group in the arena and then on the trail, Clinton is ready to help the horses and riders gain even more confidence and fine-tune their skills. G'day mate, Clinton Anderson here. Well, in this month's Club Digital Download, we're gonna be working with our group of riders again in the Arizona desert. We're gonna be teaching them how to use the method outside in the real environment to get better control of their horse. Hope you enjoy it, mate. As the riders warmed their horses up, the morning sky over the Arizona desert clouded over. By the time Clinton arrived, the sky was a dark gray. He gathered everyone for a second training session on the trail. Okay guys, so let's talk about what happened yesterday. We came out here and we trained our horse on the trail as a group, okay? Some of the horses were a little buddy sour. Rick's horse wanted to kind of lean back towards the where the trailers are parked, okay? Jeff's horse was kind of spooky. My horse was kind of spooky. The Arab was hot and wanted to run off. You know, Rick's horse was kind of hot and wanting to run off a little bit and too forward. The sorrel over here was a disaster, okay? So it was basically a, a good old fashioned clusterfuck, which is normally what it is when you go outside. I'm not disappointed with what happened la la yesterday. That's what happens when people leave home on green broke horses, okay? That's what happens. Not bad, not good, it just is what it is, okay? So we made, everybody made some improvement yesterday, but I wasn't expecting night and day improvement in one session. Today, what I'm expecting, we're gonna go train the horses again, is we're going to see uh, even more improvement. But today's improvement should be way more dramatic today than yesterday. But where we'll really see the improvement is a third day of it. Three is your magic number with horses. And this is the part that trips people up, is that they can't ride three days in a row. That's the whole key, three days in a row. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Don't give a crap what three days, but it's got to be three. Any less than three, you don't quite get the benefit. So today, for example, if we train them today, we are, we're going to see them get better. But if we don't go on tomorrow with them, you're not going to really reap the benefits of yesterday and today. But when you come back tomorrow, you will have basically new horses. Now obviously day four would be better again, day five would be better again, day six. But I've, you know, with people's lives and, and commitments and family, it's hard for a lot of people to get five or six rides a day, um, and not a day, a week. But we need to sure as hell pick three if we're trying to train a horse. Now if you buy one trained, it doesn't matter. You can leave it a year off, it doesn't matter. If it's well trained, give it three months off, it doesn't matter. But if you've got a young horse or a green horse or a horse with problems or a horse with inexperience, you, you, it's not going to get any better less than three days a week, but not Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. There can't be a day off in between the training sessions. If you're stuck for time, do two training sessions one day, like two on Monday and one on Tuesday. It's still your three. So don't be frightened of that. If that, does, you know what I mean? If you can't do three in a row, do AM, PM, and then again the next day, okay? Or if you've got two days handy, what's really good is AM, PM one day, and the next day AM, PM. That'll really get you some good knowledge soaked in, okay? So let's talk about your horse. How, how is he, this, you came out, I told you guys to get here before I arrived and go around the trees and just kind of get a feel for them and see what they're different. So, so far today, what do you notice different about your horse? Let, let me walk over a little closer so audio can pick it up. Okay. I'll get a little closer just so you can talk to me. 
Speak a little louder. You just stay there. Okay. So what do you notice different about him? Speak a little louder for me. More focus, paying attention. Yeah, he's still, he's not where he should be. He's no, where no, I'm just co- talking about compared to yesterday. He, is, um, he wasn't rushing so much. Wasn't rushing, wasn't as forward. Wasn't as forward, would walk if I asked him to walk, and yep. would wait till I asked him to trot. Wait till you asked him to trot, that's all good. So you basically feel like this morning, just starting out, we haven't done much, you're more in control. Yep. You're the driver. Yep. Would that be right or wrong in saying? Yes. Okay. So yesterday was, it was just terrible, okay, for you and him. But I don't really care that it was terrible. What I care about is did you learn from it? What do you, go, what do you know you've got to do different today to get the same, better results than yesterday even? What are you going to do? Lots of change of direction. Focus them on circles, whatever, figure eights, whichever fits. You got figure eights, you got circles, you got turns on the circles. I got practicing one ring stops and the bending, bend, you know, bending transitions, all that stuff just to get him listening and paying attention. And not just pulling straight back on his mouth the whole time. And staying at the trot until you get your confidence. Because yeah. as soon as you go to the lope, you just start hauling on his mouth and losing your balance and it's just terrible. Yeah. So stay at the trot until you're happy with it, okay? So today, he's a lot better. But after today's session, tomorrow, he should be like a brand new horse. But I need you to understand, it wasn't by accident that he got to be a brand new horse. You created that to happen. Yes, I did, but you ultimately did it, okay? Let's talk about the Arab. Let us let me get a little closer to you here. So yesterday, it was horrible, okay? Just to be blunt. His head's up in the air. I'm surprised you don't have a bloody nose every time you rode this horse, because this son of a bitch's head is right up here, knocking you in the face, okay? He was forward, he was reactive. He was a little bit like that in the arena, which I knew, but it was gonna, I knew it was gonna get a lot worse when we come outside, because remember, out here, it opens them up. Any little boogers that are in their head in the arena turn into big ones outside. During Clinton's conversation with Jen, a light drizzle that had started earlier turned into a steady rain. While the production crew ran to protect their gear, Clinton and the riders warmed their horses up with suppling exercises and circling bushes. When the rain cleared, the shoot got back underway. So we had a little bit of odd weather here in Arizona. It started out raining this morning and then it stopped and then it started and then it stopped. You know, the end of the day finished off really well and was, you know, hot, dry and the sun was out. But this morning we had to walk around quite a few rain showers and some of us got wet, had to change clothes and come back again. So yesterday, we needed to change the strategy with your horse a little bit. You were doing lots of circles, okay? And the loping to the bush, was getting you into a wreck. You fell off him. He was, it's just too forward. And it wasn't really your fault. I wouldn't have loped him either. If you would have said, Clinton, you get on him, I wouldn't have loped the damn thing either. He's just too forward. If they're forward at the trot, they're gonna be forward at the, for, way more forward at the lope. Way more forward at the gallop. So a lot of hot horses will stay at the trot for three, four, five, six days, a week even, till we get that really solid. So here's a couple of things we changed in the strategy. We did it with your horse and Rick's. One, we kept the distance between bushes or trees shorter. Remember, the harder horses, but you want to keep the distance between objects short because the longer you go between point A and point B, the more they run off with you. The opposite is true, like with your horse, Patty. She's lazy. So you want bigger distances because that lengthens her out, makes her want to go somewhere, okay? So hot horses, short distances. So we we shut that down. We also just said we're going to stick to the trot. The next thing we did is we did a lot more turning into the bushes. I told you to turn out when they cut the corner, and that's a good strategy to get the circle to be more round. But to get inside their head more, turning in and doing a lot of turning into the bush or the tree or whatever you're using, rock, will get their attention a lot better. And that did, didn't it? It it got his attention a lot better. So since you've been practicing this morning before we got here, in your words, and speak a little loud so the audio can hear, what did you notice different about this horse overall today? He acts like he was going to his own grave. He didn't want to come into this area at all. 
-hmm. Now, when you say didn't want to come into it, you mean in a negative way? He was walking quiet, walking slow. See, because when you say when you say dreaded it, didn't want to come into this area, the tree hugger is going to say, see, that just ruins him. He wanted to rear and bark and no, he was submissive. I would use a different word. I would say he was waiting. He was disciplined. He was letting you drive the ship, correct? So that was the first thing you noticed is that he wasn't marching like he's thinking five mile down the track. What else did you notice? So his overall head carriage was low because it needed to be because you, you, you just had to keep ducking his head yesterday. It's up in the air so much. I can actually see your face today. Yesterday, I had to look around his neck to see you. Okay. Um, he was paying more attention to me as I was asking him to do things. Um, and he hasn't been uh, tripping himself up because I think he's putting more attention. So he's tripping less. That's good. And I think he is tripping less because he is paying more attention to you. Yesterday, he was he was like this. He was just looking for the next... What, what's that, that airplane up there? Now he's actually engaged where his feet are going and you're going. What about his forwardness between bushes? So same thing, I mean, using your terms, he's waiting. Uh, he's much more rendered back going between bushes as long as, as you mentioned, they're facing the ground. Yes. So the whole trick is keeping that distance short. So let's say for right now, the bushes are 50 feet between each other and we've got that really good. He's waiting well. Now we're gonna go maybe 70 feet between bushes and that might be a day or two's ride. And then 90. We just build it in small increments. And after a couple of weeks, you can go 300 feet to the next bush. But what you don't want to do, and a lot of people make this mistake, is they go from 50 feet to 300 overnight. And then it ruins, it's like taking the kid from the shallow end of the pool where they're learning to tread water a little bit and you drag the little bastard down to the deep end and he just, it overwhelms him. But don't do that extreme jump there, okay? The other thing we did with yours and Rick is we changed to the figure eight strategy. More figure eight, which really means more turns. Okay, and that got in his head. I like what he's doing right here. He, you know, drop your reins down on his neck more. Dare him. Yesterday he was a little antsy, didn't want to stand still. I noticed you're always having to pull on him. And I told you, keep flexing him. But now mentally he wants to stand still. Does that make sense? See, when he's having a great day and excited, you're having a shitty ride. Let's just be blunt about it. That's what's happening. You know, all the, what I call purists or natural tree huggers, they say, I want my horse to have exuberance. I want him to be spirited. When your horse is spirited, you're about to die. Yesterday, you didn't have a great ride because you were constantly saying, am I going to get killed? Am I, is he going to run off? Do I have control? As he gets lazier, you'll feel more in control. Now, the opposite is true with yours is that as he gets lazier, you'll actually, well, he was real lazy in some areas, but now he's actually got energy where you need him to have energy, okay? So today will be a big improvement if you work hard and you did work hard. Where 90% of people fail with what we've discussed this morning is they wouldn't have followed up with a ride today. Where the next 90% of people fail is they won't do a third day. The third day is the crucial day to, to make him really realize you're serious about this. Or, you know, when I say third day, third ride. But if you would skip today and do tomorrow, you probably wouldn't see much improvement. If you skipped another day or two and do so you, you're almost better. It's like going to the gym twice a week with four days in break. It's just not worth going. Okay, so that's a big key here why people fail. Okay, good job. Rick? So this morning, Rick, we're going to do some things with him. We're going to do some more demonstrations around the trees. I notice he's flexing a little bit better there. I notice his neck lower. Again, in the beginning, they're going to flex with their neck a lot higher. Every chance you get, be flexing them. I drill on it and drill on it and drill on it. Righto, Rick. So you guys go practice, and I want to help uh, Rick here just a little bit, okay? So, Rick, let's just start with this bush here. Everybody go practice your bush work. Trees, right out, Rick, turn in. So we had to get this horse to listen a lot more yesterday. So we did a lot more turning into that tree or bush. Try not to always turn in the exact same spot every time. Mix it up. 
Now, when he jumps up a little bit to turn, that doesn't bother me, Rick, because that tells me he don't want to run over that bush. Does that make sense? Yes, don't, don't let that worry you there. I'd rather him jump back rather than run over the bush. You know what I mean? How do you know you've turned too much? When he starts anticipating Rick turning in, that's a giveaway that you've done it too much. If that's the case, then you might go two or three circles before you turn in. Now he's not doing that of course, but I'm just telling you, if you keep doing what you're doing, in about two or three days, he'll anticipate and keep trying to turn in. Okay, Rick, let's come over here now to these, these uh, three bu two bushes here, right here. That's it. No, just these two for right now. So figure eights is a big deal to get them listening here. And don't be frightened to stay at the figure eight um, location for five, six minutes until he relaxes. Especially those hot horses that are trying to run off. Don't just stay here for like 30 seconds and leave. You know what I mean? You want your horse to realize there's no better place to be. Here is the safest place in the world to be. So this one's a cool little location because there's another bush here. So, so let's do all three. Weave in and out of this other little bush right here. Yeah. Like mix it up. You can use a little triangle situation. That's it. See how you turn it into sometimes. You're mixing it up. Sometimes you turn him in. Sometimes you, you just figure eight, mix it up. Have him not realize what you're going to do next. But as you turn, Rick, I want you to slow your hands down a little bit. Like a mistake people make is as the horse gets better handle on it, Rick, they're still pulling too hard and yanking because it was kind of terrible in the beginning. They've got to learn to just take a chill pill there. Just, just pick up a little softer. Right, I'm gonna move on. You keep practicing somewhere else. So a couple of little tips I wanted to give Rick is, and it's a common kind of habit people get into, especially on a big horse like that horse is, he's not very light when he turns. He's not very soft. He's kind of, you kind of have to pull him around. Well, as the horse got better and got more nimble and softer and suppler and started turning better, we have a tendency to keep pulling with the, with the same amount of tension we did in the beginning. So I told Rick to learn to pick up a little lighter, ask him a little gentler meaning that a horse will never get any lighter than the first amount of pressure they put on. So if you pick up with one ounce, you might have to add 10 pounds after that, but if you always ask with one ounce, eventually one ounce is all that's necessary. Want more? Get more. The No Worries Club is the best way to get the most out of your training experience. Stick around to find out more. Hey mate, Clint Anderson here. For the past 20 years, I've devoted my life to creating the best training tools and videos available to help bring my method to you. But there's only one problem. You can't bring your TV into the arena. <laughs> That's why we've been hard at work developing a new platform to deliver the method to you in a whole new way. A way that brings 20 years of horsemanship and puts it in the palm of your hand. Introducing the mobile method. It's part of the new Down Under digital experience and it makes learning the method easier than ever before. Let me show you how it works, mate. Now you can always have access to the method, even when you're on the go or at the barn. The Down Under Horsemanship app gives you access to your digital training kits and allows you to download videos and training content directly to your mobile device or view them on your computer. The Down Under Horsemanship app also offers over 86 hours of free in-depth training content. No worries, club members will have full access to Clinton's ever-growing training library and a massive amount of members-only features and information. And the best part is, you can view and interact with each lesson on your mobile device or computer, giving you ultimate access to the method anytime and any place. The method is the key to getting the most out of your partnership with your horse. 
We want everybody to experience the difference it will make. That's why we created three new ways for you to get the training content you need at the price you want. Our basic level allows you to purchase and download training content to your device at our standard price with no annual fee. When you become a No Worries Club member for $19.99 a month, you get up to 50% discount on any of your purchases. Plus, you get eight digital videos and four digital journals a year and access to the No Worries Club website, the largest collection of method material and resources in the world. Plus, you can become part of our social network and chat with thousands of other folks just like you. If you want the ultimate experience, mate, the premium membership is for you. You get all the benefits of the No Worries Club, a printed copy of our No Worries Club quarterly journal, and access to all of the method and the professional series kit training videos. Altogether, that's thousands of dollars of horse training and 20 years of horsemanship delivered right to your fingertips. So there you have it, folks. The new mobile method app is the easiest and most effective way to deliver the maximum amount of knowledge at a minimal amount of time. And with the new No Worries Club, you can be assured you're gonna get exactly what you need at a price that's right for you. It's a free download, so what are you waiting for, mate? Get started today. Start your digital training experience today. Visit our website and download the Down Under Horsemanship app to experience the method in a whole new way.